Good evening. This is Mrs. Pajulia. I'm going to walk you through the Unit 4 in Buzz, the textbook reading and PowerPoint notes. To read the textbook at home or online, you can come up here to this little clip and download the textbook. It will be downloaded in a PDF format, therefore you can read it even at home. Now for the PowerPoint notes and subsequent sub sub organization to write a paragraph of how the First Nations adapted to their environment to survive. Yes, you can view this in full screen, both documents. You just would have to click on it to open up. In the sake of what's going on here, I am not going to do them in full screen, just so I can help have everything on the screen for you to see. So, again, with the fact of adjusting, I've just zoomed it in for a little bit. This document here, your Google Doc, template, and if you have the paper version, it's even a little bit easier. However, what you're going to do is determine how from the reading and the pre presentation can I locate by looking at the region they're in, their political provinces, what environment factors actually helped them survive, so what did they have available, what was their climate like? And finally, we're going to look at movement and or how and why they did it. And also look at what was accomplished because of the movements. And again, at the bottom, we're looking again, these three details on how did they adapt to their environment. This next section of this document is going to help you basically organize the structure of a paragraph. You have your topic, again, looking back up here. The color code is the same. You have your first big idea with its supporting details spots. Second big idea with its supporting details. And the third big idea with its supporting details. The blue indicators on here are transition words and or thoughts. A good transition thought would be, well, first, they adapted based on where they lived, as they lived in whatever region. And it continues on and on like that. The blue before the block of purple indicates that you're talking about you're transitioning to the next big idea. And then within it, you would have transition words or thoughts to help you blend the big idea with its supporting details. But for now, you're focusing on filling in this part of the T-chart on taking notes. Here we go. In Canada, there were five First Nations According to our textbook, we're going to look at the Arctic region, subarctic plains, northwest coast, and eastern woodlands. First, the Arctic region. Okay, they are located in the far north. That's a regional description on where they're at. Politically, you could find these people in Nunavut and the Northwest Territories, at least. Another fact. Did it help with adapting? Yes and no. Another fact is they actually have a specific name called the Inuits, which is also known as Eskimos. Eskimos ends up turning into eaters of raw meat. Not know where to put it. Let's see. You have note taking, but you could also be putting it here in the environment because they had to eat raw meat most of the time. So, physical regions. They are located in the Arctic Islands and partially in the Canadian Shield. Therefore, its climate, here's my climate, 
the top two should have been there. The climate, if you look in, if you look at your image, is larger. Of course, you're in the tundra climate or biome, which basically is cold winters and cold summers. They don't have too much of a warm summer situations. Um, what kind of foods do they have, such as did they farm, buff, hunt buffalo, or do they fish? Well, these three people are located in this Arctic area. Therefore, majority of information available is a lot of ocean. So yes, they had seals, fish, otters, whales, and walruses. So that's part of the natural resources found in this environment. And continuing on. What inventions do they come up with? And how did that help their movement or type of travel? Well, they came up with their kayak, which is a one-man boat made of bones from the whales and seals and walruses and seal skin to help keep it seal. They invented dog sledding to get from place to place along the Arctic ice. And of course, you had the Umiax, which is a 12-person boat seen down here. That was used for larger hunting parties. So that information could be the type of boat movements they had here, three of them. And or what did they do to adapt to their environment? They did not have any other means of movement other than walking. And they so they found out and had dog sleds. Going on, here is a picture of the kayak. And to help them fish and or hunt, they were able to create needles out of the bones of the ant mammals or the fish sea life. You had jewelry that they would make, which is great. The needles for sewing the jewelry because they created sculptures. Okay, those are your artisans and they are probably focusing on honing their skills to help make the needles better and of course um, build harpoons because the more skilled you were up here the better the weapons would be. They also used blubber to help keep heat and light in their abodes along the wintertime. They're in the tundra climate so trees is a very scarce resource. So to help keep their heat, they had to burn blubber for heat and light. Very little trees available as a resource. Another fact of movement is information of the spiritual sense, such as a shaman. Where would I put that in my section? If I'm not sure, I'd put it right here in my notes. The shaman helped guide their tribe as well as was a tribal leader many times. So he would, or she would set, would adapt to their environment and lead, so movement, ideas, their people beyond. All right, so yes, this was a group that definitely worshiped nature. And of course, Final adaptations is housing. Housing and clothing would be the final things to look at. In the summertime, in the wintertime, as they went out on their hunting parties, they made igloos, or as I call, prefer to call them, the pop-up tents of the Inuit people. No, these are not easily popped up and moved. However, this was the version of their portable housing. How it, unlike in the summertime with your dugout houses where, yes, we have bones, but we also have some trees available as they dig down into this, the permafrost to the love as far as they can. It helps keep the heat in the dugout house. And that concludes, by the way, I would have put those in right here, concludes the Arctic Island. 
sorry, I forgot the resources. What were the most important resources available to these guys? Main one, you got your ice and ocean. Everything else was arranged around those concepts. Okay, whoo, we got done with one group. Now again, that means that I would have been filling in some information in these vast spots. Yes, you might say, wait, I don't agree. I thought the shaman should be part of their um, location or maybe environment. If not, you put it where you think it should be. This will help you create the, pow the p paragraph so when you take your test over this unit, you can write a strong paragraph because you've already done it once. All right, so next group up is a subarctic Native Canadian group. And how did they adapt? One, take a look at this image down here and how vast or large of an area that these guys are in. They're the pink group. Okay, so yes, Central Canada. Not far north, not far south. Um, yes, it's the horseshoe shape around the Hudson Bay. And yes, there's Quebec and Ontario. This is going to go a little bit faster because now that I laid out the idea of filling in your paper here, I'm hoping you're going to understand and be able to figure it out from now. Subarctic people, they lived, as you notice here from your climate map and your regions map, they kind of follow the climate zone and the regions that were already built in here. So yes, they lived in the Canadian Shield and they also had cold winters and cool summers. This area of the information highway. All right, subarctic food. Well, they couldn't fish. Well, they probably did some fish because there's tons of fresh water in there. If you watched the Prezi and the video I had in there about the Canadian Shield, you'd understand there's was or would be some buffalo, but they preferred more the plains area or bison. And, of course, you had the farming option, which, well, not really, especially considering that these guys were nomadic members. They had to follow their food source so they're nomadic and yes there be no farming so again resources right there okay going on they also invented snowshoes which allowed them to travel okay movement down here inventing okay another thing they invented besides the snowshoe is the toboggans as you can kind of see here, they have basically everything they would need and the very basic of what they would need. All right, here we go. Food. They followed their food. They're nomads. They definitely worshipped nature. That's a movement of ideas, remember? And types of housing. Okay? They lived in what we call today wigwams. They're kind of like the igloo concept however not needed to be made out of ice or snow all right subarctic also had tons of resources available main ones are of course animals the forest stone because you guys are in the canadian shield and that takes care of that region take a break for a second and come back if you need to eastern woodlands now here we go this group is right down here along the Great Lake St. Lawrence Lowlands. And, boom. Again, I just got done mentioning that. Two main political or provinces and territories are Quebec and Ontario. All right. They also were seen in these other locations, but those two were the main ones to find the heart of it. Okay. They're located in this region, your Great Lakes, St. Lawrence Lowlands, and Appalachian Highlands. And of course, looking at what they had, they have cool winters and warm summers. Whew, keep going. They did not hunt. 
or sorry, our eastern woodlands. They're right over here along the Great Lakes and St. Lawrence Lowlands. So they definitely hunted. They had plenty of deer, elk, moose. They actually made maple syrup or discovered and made the concept of it by tapping it into the tree to get their syrup and all. Finally, if you have not done or have not, what's it called? If you have, okay, here we go. If you have not realized, this group here, Eastern Woodlands, this small group right down here, they farmed. They farmed beans, squash, pumpkins, and other foods like that. This is the only nations that tended, tended to have farming available. You're going to want to know that. Okay, they also had a canoe or a boat-like canoe where, yes, they had to dig it out, called the dugout canoes. They also found maple syrup and farming. If you need the extra help, you can ask. But again, this group was famous because they did farming, adapting to your environment. And they discovered and enjoyed maple syrup. They also did have the wigwam for their hunting parties. However, the everyday living was done in a type of housing, which here's my wigwam and here's my longhouse. So birch bark longhouses, which are the barrel shaped and all that stuff divided into sections. And you got your picture, what page to find it at. Wigwams for a humanities party. And, of course, finally, information about their homes. The longhouses actually were permanently there. And, therefore, the members were able to spend time and become more of a tribe and less of just being there. Okay, Eastern Woodlands, here are some of the main resources. Quite a bit. You could pause the video and come back into it. Alrighty, finally, Plains. We got one, this one and one more. My Plains natives, they're located right here in this yellow section, which is South Central Canada, mainly in these political locations. Okay? Going on. Plains natives, uh, their physical feature, well, they're right down here. And their climate, there you go, semi-dry winters and cool summers. And let's keep going. They hunted buffalo, but they didn't just go out and shoot a buffalo with a spear. They actually used the method of stampeding them over a cliff. All right, I think there was an extra, yep, oh, sorry, absolutely no farming. There was only one group that farmed, and that was my eastern woodlands. All right, planes. They invented, oh, we talked about their farming. Okay, yep, no farming. They pushed their buffalo or chased them over the ridge, made them stampede. Their inventions, um, they built teepees. The teepees were able to be used because their poles were longer. They had more animal skins, things like that. And, of course, they also had a little bit more time than, say, the subarctic or arctic people because they're just trying to survive. Okay. They used all parts of the buffalo slash bison and made tools, shields, even hair brushes. The tongue of the bison was known as really a good hairbrush. I know, kind of gross. And again, decide where to put it in over here. Oh, sorry, the tongues. Yeah, buffalo tongues were made from, for hairbrushes. The people were actually referred to, 
the people of the buffalo. The Plains natives are called the buffalo people. So again, here's an image of all parts of this buffalo that's being used. Nothing goes to waste. So because it all revolves around buffaloes. And type of housing, the teepee. Teepee was able to easily be packed up and moved. They did not carry it. They, of course, drug it behind. And main resources. What they're named after, they lived mainly with the buffalo or bison, which is what they are in this area, even though they're referred to as people of the buffalo. Truly, the animal is a bison, which is right here. I'll give you a clue. You need to know that these are talking in far as our comments about the same animal. All right. Whew. I think we're at the last group. Let's double check it. Yes, we are on the last group. All right. Northwest Coast. Here we go. You guys are going to look right here. It's one of the small ones again, located on the West Coast off of British Columbia. Here we go. Physical feature, physical place they landed in. Well, Canadian Cordillas or Western Mountain region. They also live have mild winters and wet summers. They actually have quite warm weather right about in this area than most of the rest of that upper northern part of the Americas. Their climate, sorry, go back to that for a second. Their climate was milder because of the warm air brought in off of the Pacific. All right, Northwest Coast again, right here in my orange, very small. They were um, trying to find food. They did a lot of fishing. They're right here on the ocean. So here are some of the items that they fished, part of your resources. And of course, really big thing to know, no farming. Continuing on, inventions. They actually had to dig out their canoes. They'd burn it and then dig the ash out, made out of cedar trunk. They created totem poles. Totem poles were concepts of to keep the family history as well as protect the people that's behind living there. And continuing. What type of traditions do they have? That would be form of movement. They're thinking, they're communicating. Well, they just had what was called potlatch, celebrate the way, and had the chief actually would give away their food and possessions. That's one of your vocab. They definitely told myths, and myths was a major factor in who and what they tried to do in their life. Finally, type of housings. They have a form of longhouse. However, they're called cedar plank longhouses. And these were not made out of the same basic foundation as the eastern woodlands. As in that area, cedars, very popular and easy to come by. Going on, the main resources, well, you got fish. They're on the ocean, remember? So you got the sea and fish. And is that my last one? Yes, it is. Excellent. So to fill in each one of these, if you need to go back to any of the slides, please do so. And furthermore, in class time, hopefully you get a chance to discuss what you put and why. All right. Thank you very much. Have a, thank you again, have a great night, and yes, you can go back through the presentation at any time. Good night. Oh, right there.